The goal today is to test out if this Promarine Supply tabletop epoxy might be useful for smoothing out 3D print lines. So I originally got it for doing one of those super clear coatings on top of a table and also for some really shallow clear castings because it is nice and clear and it releases bubbles really well. So it's great for that. But as I was working with the product, I had the thought that this might have another application in smoothing out these 3D prints, much like the XTC resin that's marketed specifically for that purpose by SmoothOn. So I'm going to go ahead and try this out with this 3D printed Trident, which is by CP 3D Printing, which I'll put a link below in the description if you want to check out the project kits on the Etsy store there. The top portion of this print has quite a bit of unevenness because it was where the support structures were attached, so that left some gaps, really rough areas. The handle part is much more smooth, and then there's kind of everything in between, so it's a good test piece for seeing how this works. This product is mixed by volume, so I've got equal parts of A and B, and I'm going to pour those together into the mixing cup, and then you've got to mix it for about three to five minutes. I find with these really small quantities, it's actually pretty easy to mix. I'm only using one ounce for this first layer. So that I could easily cover the whole project without it getting all caught in a drippy puddle, I made a stand that the top part of the trident can just stick onto, and that keeps it nice and well, <laughs> relatively stable, keeps it at least vertical and not falling over while I apply the resin. Well, this has a decent work time. I didn't time it exactly, but it was plenty long enough for me to brush it over the entire trident after stirring it for a few minutes. It does start to get a little thicker as you work with it, but it seems like for a one ounce size, it was completely fine for no stress brushing over the whole piece. If you have a larger amount mixed, then it will start to heat up and cure faster. But for this application, you only need a small amount at a time. The parts have already been glued together. It was originally four pieces for this section of the trident. I have attached those together with a piece of dowel rod and some hot glue. So they were not perfectly joined. There was a small gap, but that's fine because I want to see how the resin works for helping to fill that gap, maybe make it a bit stronger. In past, I've just used the filler primer for smoothing out print lines and for trying to fill in any gaps. And I've noticed that the joints tend to start coming back through over time. It is really difficult with just filler primer to get that smooth and also strong. So it's going to be interesting to see if this could provide a better result in addition to saving some of that lengthy sanding time. Now the key with this resin is it does need to be used in a warm environment. They say that it has to be between 75 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit and I am definitely more in the 80 plus degree range so no problems there but definitely would be more of a challenge in winter you'd need to have a heated area. So once I brushed this first coat over the whole piece, I used a heat gun to bring the bubbles to the surface and it's gonna make those release and just pop, smooth things out more. Because I'm just working outside and this is not a clean room, there's dust everywhere, there's bugs flying around, there's things blowing in the breeze. It's not a big deal trying to get out every single bubble, but they do release very easily. It's just the debris that's kind of getting caught in this that would be a problem if you were trying to do a final coat, but I know I'm going to be doing more coats and sanding this down anyways, so I'm not concerned about that in this case. This is a very small, low-powered heat gun that's really more used for embossing. I also pulled out the larger heat gun that gets hotter, but I didn't find it made a whole lot of difference in this case. The bubble, bubbles do pop quite easily because this is very shallow. They release easily even from thicker pores when you're doing a tabletop, so this is not a problem in that case. I did a combination of heating and brushing, trying to figure out which were bubbles and which were just bits of debris that I needed to pull out, and then also just trying to stop any drips before they got too bad. It's fine if it's a few drips, but I want to try to get it as even as possible. Because there's texture on the surface of this piece, uh, the more textured areas kind of tend to be more uneven with the resin. It can't really self-level because so many of these surfaces are vertical. So you just have to put it on fairly thin and try to brush it smooth until it starts to cure. 
This needs to cure for a few hours. Depending on the ambient temperature, it's going to take a different amount of time. They are recommended as 4 to 10 hours before the next coat. I think I probably left it maybe for something like that. I just tested how tacky it was. You want it to be tacky cured. You don't want it to be fully cured because the next layer needs to bond properly. You don't want to sand it between. So there's quite a bit of texture still after this first coat. After the second coat, this is where we're at. It's a good bit better. Certainly that top area where the support structures were attached is nice and smooth, relatively speaking. The handle went on pretty good. There isn't a whole lot of print lines showing really anywhere at this point. It's more just resin texture, kind of from the uneven way that it cured over this uneven texture underneath. And it does seem like the resin soaked into those cracks where the pieces were joined together, so that should add some good strength there. Next up, I'm going to sand this. Now, it's already cured for a couple of days. It's supposed to be 72 hours to get the full cure. I did put this into a cardboard box and put a space heater on it to try to rush that up a bit, but you do have to make sure it's fully cured. Otherwise, it's just going to gum up the sandpaper and not sand well at all. So I tested this, started it sanding it, and it was sanding fine, so I knew I was cured well enough to continue. This piece was perfect for using the palm sander. Now, this sander, I found to be quite versatile. It's not particularly aggressive, and it also just takes standard sanding paper. You just cut it to size. I've got a 220 grit to smooth out this resin. This does have some minimal dust extraction. You can poke the holes through the sandpaper with that tool that it comes with, and then some of the dust ends up in the small bag, but mostly that just helps a little bit to keep the paper from getting gummed up. Most of the dust still just goes everywhere, so you've got to work outside or have some kind of downdraft table or something. The resin did sag somewhat on these vertical surfaces, not surprisingly, so I used the Dremel to get that started, get rid of the drip mostly before going back to the palm sander. Although I did use too aggressive of a sanding barrel on this, you'll notice later that some of the scratches went in too deep, so maybe just shouldn't have used quite such an aggressive sanding barrel. And I'm not trying to get this perfect with just two coats of this without sanding in between. I mean, there's no way that it's going to be a perfect finish, so I'm just trying to get it roughly smoothed out enough so we can give it a coat of paint and see that what the basic results are after this minimal amount of effort. After power sanding with the palm sander and the Dremel, I went in with some regular sandpaper but on a paint stir stick so I could get into some of the tight areas where I was having trouble reaching with the motorized sanding tools. And then also the handle part, because it's just so many curves and detailed areas, I used some 400 grit sandpaper just to try to rough it up a little bit to make the paint stick. I noticed that while I was working on this, it seemed really sturdy. The three prongs are much better attached, I think, than uh, when I did the Drax blades. The seam kept wanting to come back through because I just used the dowel, Gorilla Glue, and then filler primer to fill it in. So I'd say that the resin was a much better option for making sturdy seams in these multi-piece parts. I would definitely go this route in future on any such projects. Once this was well enough sanded to continue to the next step, I decided just to jump straight to applying some paint. I rinsed the entire thing under running water to remove as much dust as possible, allowed it to air dry, and then right before adding the paint, I'm going to just brush over it with a tack cloth. This is basically just a sticky piece of fabric that helps to catch any fibers or remnants of dust. I've started using these recently and I like them because paper towels leave tons of lint and it seems like every cloth I use leaves a ton of lint so this is a good option. You just wipe it down and then put it away so that it stays tacky without collecting dust from other things. So I'm going to go ahead and just spray this down with some gold. This is going to give a better idea of how good a job the tabletop resin actually did because it's difficult to see what the surface is really like since it's clear and then the print is showing through. I 
You could also just use primer at this stage and then maybe even do some filler primer. But it just jumps straight to the paint because that's what I had on hand. Nothing like a metallic paint to show every blemish. And here's the final result from this test. So there are, of course, a couple of areas where the details have gotten pretty shallow from the resin filling that in. That's something to watch out for with any filler. There's also several areas where I sanded rather too aggressively with my Dremel. I needed to change out that barrel. The joint lines did come through somewhat still, but that's just because it needs probably a couple more layers to properly level out the seam there and then be able to sand it down flush. Whereas that top surface, there's not really any texture left from the print support removal. There's just scratches from my overly aggressive sanding bit. I would consider this definitely a success and I will absolutely be using this product for this type of application in future. I believe that it strengthened the joints much better than just filling them in with filler primer. It sands well and it uses a very small amount, it's cost effective, even more cost effective than the XTC resin. Works great, it's nice to have a product that I can use for multiple purposes because it's a really nice tabletop resin. It can do thin castings as long as you don't pour more than about an eighth of an inch at a time. It's really quite clear for that, it releases bubbles well. And now it also works great for smoothing 3D prints, so it's a super useful product to have on hand.